from Las Vegas, Nevada, the entertainment capital of the world. I'm David Gabbard, and this is the Vegas Faces Podcast, where we talk with Las Vegas locals about what it's really like to live in the city of lights. Whether you're living in Vegas, moving to Vegas, or just visiting Vegas and looking for new adventures, together let's discover the hidden gems that make Sin City the most visited place on earth. Everybody, welcome to Vegas Faces, where we talk to the people of Las Vegas and we find out what it's really like to live in the entertainment capital of the world. We've got a fabulous guest today. Julia Fosberg is in studio. She does strategic digital marketing for a luxury dating website. And before that, she worked for the top advertising agency right here in Las Vegas. Really excited to get into it. Julia, how are we doing? Good, good. How are you? Thank you so much for having me. Of course. Here's your applause break. <laughs> Feeling like a rock star? Oh, yeah. Look at that. What's up, Julia? We're here to talk about Vegas. How are we feeling? Good, good. I mean, the, the weather right now is great. It's the best time to be in Vegas. Yep. May, perfect. Yeah, this is like, before it gets really, really hot, uh -huh, this uh -huh. is the time. This window weather, it's time to just exactly. enjoy. Like, literally, you can drive down with your windows down and have that perfect breeze. It's like perfect summer nights. Can we also say no bugs? No bugs. Like Think, no mosquitoes fly through your, you know. No mosquitoes. Nope. None. I mean, the only thing you probably get would be an ant or few. Yeah. I mean. Just the normal. We normal still bugs. have them. If yeah. They're here, but. Not pterodactyls. You know, I grew up in um, Houston where, you know, you, you had June bugs flying through your windows. <laughs> oh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Cockroaches. Yeah. Flying cockroaches. Oh, my gosh. No. And especially from Chicago, from originally where I'm from, we get mosquitoes. Yeah. And those are not fun. Yeah, that's the unfortunate part about Chicago. In the summertime, it's like the best time. Mm -hmm. And even then, it's hard to enjoy because of A, the humidity, and then yep. B, you get bitten everywhere you go. Exactly. And, and of course, it's still windy. It's not like the wind is just in the, does, in the winter. In the winter time, yeah. No, and it, and it gets it gets windy here too. But yeah, no, I definitely enjoy being in Las Vegas as compared to Chicago. Well, okay, let's get into that. You started in Chicago. I did. I did. I lived in Chicago for about 13 years. Lived in the city. Was a little bit of a city girl. And then moved to Las Vegas. My parents, obviously with my parents, because I was 12 years old, so I couldn't move to Vegas on my own. I remember going to Circus Circus every time we came on here for vacation. Circus Circus was where we always went to go, Adventure Dome. And then I just thought I was going to be living in a hotel room. Because when you think about people moving to Las Vegas, you never think about houses. Mm -hmm. You know, that was yeah. the first question I think I asked my parents. You know, I said, where are we going to live? Because all I associated Las Vegas with was hotel rooms and buffets <laughs> and big swimming pools. So um, when my parents said, oh, no, no, you know, where do you, that's a very logical question to a 13 year old. They're like, well, where do you think those people go at the end, right? you know, when they're done working, you know, from the <laughs> hotel, where do you think they go? And I'm like, oh yeah, you're right. You know? And so then we kind of, that's Kind of started my adventure in Las Vegas where I, you know, I lived in Summerlin and um, went to high school and middle school and went to college in California and then somehow came right back to Las Vegas. That's a great lesson to learn at age 12. Like <laughs> yeah. Where do the people go when they get yeah. off work? Because I still get asked, like, you live in Vegas? So like, what, you live at Bellagio? Like yeah. you, you just yeah. live. And someone actually from out of town, seriously, they go, but I met someone who lives in the Aria. And I'm like, okay, sure. That's valid. That's yeah, fair. It's very valid. Yeah. They, some people do. <laughs> but, yeah. You know, not all, not all of us, not just all like, of you know, I grew up in Texas and people would joke, like, oh, you ride horses. Like, I feel like it's the equivalent type of question. Exactly. It is. It really, really is. And so when I left Las Vegas to go to college in California, you know, it was a bit of a, not a culture shock, but let's just say this, that when I wanted to go to the grocery store, it was closed because Vegas is known for being a 24 hour, you know, city of lights, always something going on. Everything's always open. So it was very hard for me to adjust that, oh, wow, you know, the corner store is closed at nine o'clock. You know, I can't go to the local 7-Eleven or go to the Smith's grocery store right. or whatever because, you know, they're not open. So uh, that was a little bit of a shift in, for me in college. <laughs> it's so weird how <laughs> we get so spoiled here with with a 24 hour town, yep. then uh, you, you go just like to the next city, like Phoenix, and you're like, oh, the whole everyone goes, you know, shut down by yeah. nine. Yeah, and 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 I went to school in in Southern California, and more specifically, I went to school. Um, I lived in Irvine, and let me tell you, it shuts down. Like Sundays, it's family day, pretty much shuts down. It, it's like a ghost town wow. at night. Yeah, so it and was, it most was towns are. We we think it's <laughs> weird it's because weird, we live right? here. It feels so weird <laughs> to even say that now. That like, and that's someone else's normal. But that's not 
that's not ours. Yeah. Okay. But I love it. I love that. And even living in the burbs, like the suburbs of Vegas, you don't mm-hmm. really feel the 24 hour side of Vegas. No, really. no, you, you really don't. But it's in the back of your mind that, you know, like it's there if you it's want really it. It's really there if you want it. But no, you mean, you yeah, we've to. got family, kids. What are you going to, what are we going to do? Well, let me tell you this. When I, when I was pregnant with my second, I was craving a burger. But not just a burger, like from Burger King or McDonald's or right. In-N-Out. No, no, no. I wanted like, a, like a burger, like from a bar. Oh, you know? okay. And so, do you have um, a spot here in Vegas? I do. It's called the Lakes Lounge. It's Ooh, in the okay. Lakes. Mm-hmm. Sahara uh, Durango. Somewhere? Uh, yeah, right over, right around ish. that area. Yep, ish. And you know, I was able to just call in, get my burger, have my husband drive <laughs> down there, and grab my burger. You know, and it was literally, I think maybe one thirty in the morning. Pregnancy craving. So when you get it, you want it. But I don't know if I could have done that in another place. It's very true. We live one mile from an in and out. And yes. most people in this country don't get to have in and out, let alone be one mile from it. Also, let alone have it access to it like until what, one in the morning? I think it's one in the morning. Yeah. yeah. I know they were closed. That's why. Yeah. That's <laughs> I was like, well, this sucks. <laughs> now, I have a friend who's an ER doctor and he works odd hours mm-hmm. and he has the same, you know, a burger spot. He can call them at three in the morning if he wants to. And they already, they're like, oh, Mike. Okay. Yep. We got you. Exactly. We already know See, your everyone, order. everyone knows your name. Yeah. You can't do that in any other town than this town, huh? Nope. Nope. You can't. And, and people here in Las Vegas that I've noticed, and granted, I've lived here, um, well, God, for 23 years. I moved here in, in 2000. I can t- honestly tell you that it's a very small town. Mm-hmm. There's some, some, somehow you know someone some you know someone of someone there's like always that level of separation or what is that what's that saying like um, oh the seven degrees of seven, seven kevin bacon right something no, like that? No. <laughs> <laughs> no i think it's like third you're like three degrees of separation or yeah, something yeah. like that that's the you more know? professional way to say it yes sure. but yeah you know i can go somewhere and be like oh i think i know you from high school i'm like mm-hmm. uh yeah because you used to hang out with this person and i haven't met them or seen them in like 10 years, wow. you know, or even just in a professional setting for, you know, where I work right, right right now, actually, for this luxury dating website, our creative team is someone who we worked on the same client together when I worked at the advertising agency and in, the, in a professional setting, like we just knew the same people. And it's just very, very weird because you would have never think that or thought that in Las Vegas that, you know, you, you have some type of I don't know the word, the uh, familiarity. Yeah, familiarity between like a coworker and a next door neighbor. Hmm. You know, there's yeah. somehow you just know someone yeah. through someone. So, yeah, that's Vegas for you. When you, the fact that, or maybe before when you were working in an advertising agency, did mm-hmm. did people the same way they ask you, do you live on the strip? Did they ask you, like, oh, did you design the what happens in stay, stays in, what happens in Vegas? What happens in Vegas? Vegas? So actually, that was, um, no, but yes, for the most part, they don't ask me that question specifically. <laughs> But they do ask, you know, have you seen all the shows? Did you design the shows, like the marquees and and oh, when we when we come into the airport, all of those big marquees and 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 the videos, did you guys design those? And you know, some of them we did. You know, we actually had a really large property. Uh, the MGM was one of our was one of our clients, and so that right there, we had a lot of properties on the strip, and we did a lot of their advertising, not only from direct marketing, but all the way to media and to commercials. So you know, our hands were pretty much in everything, and we were a lot of companies not in Las Vegas, but out of like the country came to us because we marketed Las Mm -hmm. Vegas for what it is, you know, and this entertainment capital of the world and M Life Rewards. You saw that we did it, you know, so then you just kind of built that reputation. And Vegas is just it's it's one of a kind. And I don't think you'll ever find it anywhere, anywhere else. Mm -hmm. But people flock here to find it or to somehow get a piece of it and bring it back home. Was it all like the the spectacles of Vegas or did you ever have a client that was just like some um, regular mom and pop, you know, I off did. the strip type? We, we did. We did. We definitely had um, an array of clients. But yes, definitely we had down to a hospice mm, okay. here in Las Vegas, which ironically, not even ironically, but which was, you know, weirdly owned by Elaine Wynn. Uh, which was I was palliative there you care, go, the familiarity you know? aspect, and the familiarity exactly. <laughs> but you know, you would have thought of like hospice care and like, wait, how does Steve Wynn's wife playing to part of this, you know, and you're just kind of like, oh, you learned something new or Brad Garrett, who's a stand up comedian, mm-hmm. you know, he has very close ties with hospice care with wow. um, with this hospice center. So yeah, it's just somehow it just for, yeah. it just intertwines some way. And I, I never understood it. Yeah, it's like this web of secrets, but like cool secrets. Yeah. And I feel like this city people like to create their own opportunities as well as work their 
you know, their nine to fives or mm-hmm. whatever their regular jobs are. Mm-hmm. Someone like Brad Garrett, he owns a comedy club. Oh, hey, maybe I can put my hand over here too. You know, Steve Wynn's wife, maybe mm-hmm. the same thing. The people I've met here, they're constantly looking for opportunities in all kinds of places where mm-hmm. in other cities, the types of people that I've met usually is just, I do this for a living. And that's that. Yeah. Yeah. No, and that that's that's definitely true. I've, I've experienced that, not personally, but through my family. I've like seen that and, and we've experienced that very cut and dry. Mm-hmm. And not very entrepreneurial. Mindset. Yeah, maybe that's it. Maybe maybe there's it. a there's a level of risk mm-hmm. taking that people have here. Well, it's a they, gambling. It is a gambling town. Yeah, it's a gambling town. <laughs> so you got to take those risks and meet people. But also, I guess one thing I would definitely say about Las Vegas is because it is a very small knit community. Never want to burn any bridges. Mm-hmm. ever you know and i guess that's just something that you should never do anyways but especially here in las vegas because somehow someone knows someone it'll get back to and you. it'll get back to you yep. and you always just want to have an honest clean face or in this case you know you always want to have an honest and clean hand yeah and leave respectfully or gracefully and you know never cut ties and never burn bridges that is the one downside i would say is because vegas is such a transient town sometimes you get some of those bad apples yep We'll burn a bridge and they might they might get you. Yep. We experienced that when we went through a remodel when we first moved here. Oh, no. And contractors that just came and went. Yep. Oh, what happened to, to so-and-so? I hired him, you know, six months ago. Let's ask him back for, for this or that. And uh, he, he's, he's, he's off and he's he, off, he yeah. already made a bad reputation for himself. And yep. he's either in another state or another country. Yep, yep, <laughs> exactly. No, no, you definitely do have those bad apples. But for the most part, I mean, everyone here, you'll be surprised how far few born and raised actual Las Vegans you'll you'll find. Yeah. I always joke around with my husband that we're kind of born and raised. There's a bar called Born and Raised. <laughs> it's actually, it's amazing. But I'll just say, you know, I'll joke around like, oh yeah, my husband's born here and I'm like raised here. Because granted, I've lived here f- for 23 years. I'm mm-hmm. pretty much raised here. But you don't really find that many people that are actually born here. Um, and I actually just came across uh, a mom who's a fourth generation Las Vegan, which is crazy. Wow. Just the fact that she even said that, I'm like, wow. Like, I mean, you're here back when like the Binion, like the Binion mm-hmm. Hotel was here, like like right down when downtown Las Vegas was where it needed to be, where the Meadows School was on Meadows Lane by the Meadows Mall, wow. you know, which is it's just crazy to think that like there's there's very few people here that are born here. They do stay in case in point that one individual did, but some do flock and they leave. But then they come back. Yeah, they come back. Mm-hmm. They always end up back. And I know it's generic, but I really do think the weather plays a lot. It does. Like I know, you know, oh, we're talking about the weather kind of thing. But mm-hmm. really, though, on the flip side, Chicago, for instance. Yeah. Which, hey, I love Chicago. I spent nearly eight years in Chicago. That's where you born and raised, right? Born. Correct? Yeah, I was born there until born, I was born. Uh, you know, sorry, yeah. raised in Vegas. Born, right. spent, you yeah. know, the first. <laughs> My first quarter of my life. Yeah. Formative years. There you go. That weather is unpredictable. I mean, I grew up in Houston, another unpredictable. Yeah. And that just adds like a level of stress to your day on top of the already stressful day that you're going to have. So mm-hmm. I do think that people are generally happier here because mm-hmm. of, and maybe that makes us soft. I, I think the city of Chicago kind of toughened me up with all the, just the, the, the chaos yep. of it. Yep. Whereas here, eh, we're a little bit more laid back, but mm-hmm. overall, I think that's an advantage given whatever you're trying to accomplish, mm-hmm. that you're not already worn down by something as simple as the weather. Exactly. Exactly. I, I completely agree. And then to that as well, you know, coming from a city, you know, I'm a city girl. One thing that I do wish that Las Vegas had a bit more would be, you know, if you ever saw a person just walking down the street in Vegas, you mm-hmm. know, just maybe walking up Sahara or walking down Durango, you kind of look at them, you're like, oh, yeah, it's not a walking city. Like, what's going on? Like, are you okay? Mm-hmm. Like, do you have a car? You know, like right. you kind of like have this like empathy for them or like you think something like happened you think to something them. happened, you yeah. know, and like for me, like it coming from from a city. Because in Chicago, people in suits are Yeah, walking, people are in and suits and high heel shoes. And yeah. it's perfectly fine for them to walk like, yeah. you know, 10 blocks, you know? And so <laughs> if I were to walk from my house to the grocery store, someone mm-hmm. would probably think that like, wow, the shoe's getting ready to yeah. take the bus somewhere, you know, or doesn't have a car. <laughs> and it's like, whoa, dude, you know, like, I do, you know, but, oh, yeah. and that's one thing that I wish that we was a little bit more, I'm not going to say frowned upon, but was, you know, something that I saw a bit more. But then again, it's probably because of the weather because it's so damn hot. That was the funny part. Whenever <laughs> living in Chicago, whenever my family would come visit and it was so convenient, you had the train coming from the airport, taking you yeah, straight right from to your, uh-huh. you know, your was apartment. Was it the blue line? Yeah, the yeah. blue line. And so, you know, someone who 
who was not familiar with the fact that everybody takes the train, whether yep. whether you're a millionaire business person or you're, you're flat broke, it doesn't matter. We're all on this train We're all together. together. Uh-huh. But when, you know, my mother would come to town, I'm like, oh yeah, just hop on the blue line and then, you know, I'll, I'll come get you from there. She's like, you're going to put your mother on a train? Like, yeah. as if it was like it was this like, like low, low class. class. Yeah. Like, it's like, excuse me? Like, okay. And I'm pretty sure there's a lot I'm of like, people. You know, the traffic going from here to like on the freeway, like it doesn't make sense. Like yeah. we'll sit there for like two hours. Yeah. Like, just, just hop on this train and we'll go have lunch. Yeah. Have you ever taken the the RTC, the bus during a Vegas Golden Knights game? I have not, but it's probably a smart move given a, all the traffic. It's a lot of fun. And I feel like that's probably the only like socially acceptable time, I guess, to take the bus, I guess, in Las Vegas, some people's eyes. I don't know. <laughs> um, but I, you know, they there's at certain bars that they'll set up shop. You can get there to the bar, have a pre-drink, mm. then hop on the bus takes you directly to the T-Mobile arena and then Wait, so watch hold the on, game. I'm sorry. Let me back up. We meet at the bar and then hop on the bus or take yeah. the bus to the bar? No. no meet. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> <laughs> you know what? When you think of it that way, it should be the other way around. But no, we actually drive to the bar. Okay. Right. Okay. Or Uber. What's the name of this bar? Born and Ra- Bar. Born and Raised? It's that's called the, Bar. That's, oh, it's just called Bar. Yeah, Born and Raised. Wait, I'm so confused. So the B is Born, the A is and, oh, and the R man. is rain. <laughs> Raised. <laughs> it's a bar. <laughs> they have a few locations. And is that like a specific like Vegas Nights bar? Um, here I town? don't know if they would be like the official Las Vegas Nights bar, but I've seen a lot of the games there. They've got the bus shuttle hookup that takes you straight to the game. Yeah, from like there? yeah. Well, because RTC, what they did at one point to really promote, and I, I yeah. believe they're still doing it right now. At certain bars that they, you know, maybe it's a PTs or mm-hmm. it's distill, um, they may switch it up. But you Uber down there with your friends, grab a drink, then you hop on the bus, take you down to T-Mobile Arena, nice. watch the game, and then you just like you walk back to the bus stop, and then takes you right back to the bar, and then you go home. I love it. Yeah, but it's great because like the whole entire bus, everyone's in jerseys, everyone's yeah, like either it's hammered. Vibe. It's a very fun vibe, and it's super super cool. And you're like, yeah, this is great, and like that makes me feel like I'm back in a, in a city, in a walking city. Yeah, yes. in a walking yes. city because I love that because of that spirit. So that's something that I wish I would see a little bit more in Las Vegas. Out here in the burbs. Out here out in the, the burbs. Quiet burbs. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, it would not be rowdy or anything, but I mean, mm-hmm. just you know, it's okay to walk. Yes, you know, without it's being safe. looked at like something. Happens yeah, here. like something's wrong with you. Yeah, yeah. you know, I don't like that. Um, That's true. I feel like people here in the burbs maybe are a little bit uptight in that. Like, I feel like Mary, if she, if she saw someone walking around in the neighborhood at night, they could be exercising for all yeah. we know. She might be like, oh my God, we got to lock the doors. Like, Oh yeah. Oh my God. Don't go on your next door app. <laughs> Jeez. I'll be like, this person's walking at 1138 and you know, check your ring doorbells. Like you know? maybe they're just, maybe they're literally just walking to the bar and being responsible. Yeah. Meanwhile, I'll put them, you know, 10 miles towards the strip and you know, it's completely yeah, it's, normal. It's completely fine. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So we kind of, we kind of did that in Chicago going to the basketball games, the Bulls games. Mm-hmm. You'd meet at a bar that bar had a shuttle take you straight to the game yeah. it was it was a whole vibe people yeah. were partying on the bus it was yeah. fun especially if they won you exactly know, so. exactly and i mean that's the I, I think i think by having the t-mobile arena with the vegas golden knights and now having the raiders here i mm-hmm. think it's starting to bring a lot of that type of vibe here to las vegas especially for the locals i mean i don't really see and, and it may happen i don't but hear a lot of visitors coming to las vegas specifically to go to the t-mobile Reba, arena or yeah. to a unless it's like game. part of their hotel Hotel package. Exactly. Unless it's part of, unless, yeah. But other than that, I mean, you're not going to find, you know, John and Jessica coming down with their family of four and then just mm-hmm. happen to, oh, you know, let's just go catch a Raiders game. Like, you know, there's, there's other things they're yeah. going to do with their kids. Unless or, the Raiders are playing their team. Unless, yeah. And then but now that's it's a, a whole purpose. Vegas trip. Right. Yeah. Right. But that's a purpose they're coming, you know, Got but it, yeah. I feel like the, the football games and the hockey games are specifically for the locals for us, something for us to do something. Yeah. Especially hockey. Because that was yes. the first one. That was like our first love with sports. It was. It really was. I actually had a, I still have my jersey because. <laughs> and didn't we make, didn't we, we didn't we, win the Stanley Cup, but we, we got all we the way We got to, all the way up there. Yep. Yeah. We were all the way up there. We were so damn close. So close. I even have a half jersey that's half Vegas Golden Knights, half Blackhawks. Oh, wow. Right down the middle. I cut it and then sewed the two oh, jerseys together because I couldn't, you know, when I, when I went to a Vegas Golden Knights game versus yeah. the Blackhawks, I couldn't. Do you miss Chicago at all? I miss the city. I miss the city vibe. I miss that feeling you yeah. get. Okay. Uh, you know what? No, I like maybe you were too young when you left to know like what is what does Chicago look like as an adult now compared yes, to Vegas as, a, as an adult. Yeah, you know, I think what I miss is I there's a certain energy that I mm. missed, and it could be just maybe from in New York it's that that same energy that I get from New York. Hustle I, bustle. Yes, I do miss that. But you know, I you do get that here. Maybe mm-hmm. not in the burbs, but yeah. you do get it here. 
And like we were saying, you know, Vegas, Las Vegas locals are a little bit more entrepreneurial Mm -hmm. than some other places. So, yeah. What is it like working for a dating website here in a town that I've heard mixed reviews when it comes to dating in Las Vegas, whether because of the transient nature of Vegas. Mm -hmm. I'm curious to know your thoughts on yeah. Someone who's single, just moved to Vegas, yeah. ready to mingle. Well, I mean, so the, the dating website, the, even though it is based here in Las Vegas, you know, we do have a lot of our customers around the world. But, you know, dating in Las Vegas in itself, from stories and threads that I've heard, not only on Reddit, but just internally through customer service, it's definitely very unique, you know, because it is transient. You know, you have these individuals who may be looking for a discreet relationship and they happen to be coming here for a convention Mm, and okay you know they may be looking for um let's just say maybe an indecent proposal i don't know if you know that movie with robert redford and demi moore okay or it could be very much more like um uh what's another type of movie uh I just had the top of my head. Um, like Pretty Woman? Pretty Woman. There you go. Thank you. Yes. This is going to be a Julia Roberts and Richard Gere type of type of scenario. Scenario. Exactly. So you get that on the website as well, you know, that are okay. looking for... People living secret lives, perhaps. Yes. It, it could be very transactional or they're really just genuinely looking for someone that, you know, isn't in that nightlife scene. The nightlife here in Las Vegas, which I'm pretty sure your listeners are aware of, you know, we have our nightclubs, we have, you know, Tao and Mm -hmm. this new resorts world, Zook, I believe that's what it's called. But, you know, you have the the promoters, that nightlife, they work from 6 p.m. up until maybe three or four in the morning, you know, and and their priorities are a little bit different. And some of these individuals, they don't want to date someone who is in that, mm-hmm. inter- in that space because they are around a lot of temptation. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they want to settle down. They want to find someone who has a normal job. And it's kind of like, well, what is normal in Las Vegas? Because Vegas is entertainment capital of the world. We are known for our customer service. We are known for our best restaurants, our shopping. The experience that we give you is why you come back. And so trying to find someone who's not in that space where 95% of people are in that space, it's very hard because they're either already married or, you know, like they're already in a committed relationship. So, you know, you, you, you tend to find yourself dating or, you know, dating someone out of state. And it, it then it becomes someone who's coming in, tra- you know, very transit. You know, yeah, I happen wow. to meet someone at a bar at the Bellagio, you know, and we just maybe start dating, but then the long distance didn't work out. And then back to square one, trying to find someone or they're a bottle service girl. And, you know, they, they found someone at a nightclub. And then I think I literally, I, there's a story of that <laughs> where one of my girlfriends uh, was a bottle service girl and she met her husband and then they ended up moving to Marina Del Rey. And have three beautiful kids. Oh, amazing. So it happens. And so these are specifically people that want to date outside of their world. Yes. They want to date outside of their world. Um, Even because you would think that that would be, why not just find someone who has the same schedule as you? Maybe it's too weird because that, that, that you're dating a coworker or... Or someone but too close to your industry. Yeah, maybe that's that that weird. Is but no, weird. not weird. But isn't that weird that we even have to say that? Like in Las Vegas, like find someone who works in the same schedule as you. Like in New, <laughs> like in New York, you know, like or Chicago, everyone's mm-hmm. nine to five in the financial yep. district. You know, like the city shuts down at a certain time. But in Las mm-hmm. Vegas, when it's twenty four seven, it's like we got to make sure our, our schedules make sense, yeah. right? Because yeah, I can't, I at, can't work nights, and you work days. We'll never see each other. Exactly. Like, that's not going to work out. It's not going to work out. No, <laughs> and it's not. And and that's how that's a lot of mm-hmm. lives here in yeah. Las Vegas where even my husband, his mom was a cocktail server and his dad is now still a blackjack dealer. But yeah, they had separate- so Same realm, but at least they didn't realm. have to see each other at work and it wasn't they, too, too close. Yeah, they actually did work in the same. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they worked in the same space. So they made, okay. but they had different schedules, right? Uh, because who okay. was going to stay home with the boys? Yeah. Right? So oh, she man. would they be there. kids in the mix? Oh, wow. oh and there are kids. Yeah. So wow. he would work at nights and she would work during the day so she could be home at night with the kids. So it's like- you have to think about that. Mm-hmm. Sure. I mean, I did comedy in my early 20s and it was definitely hard to find anyone, A, interested in dating a comic that makes like zero money. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and then B, wait, like, hold on, you start your quote unquote job at 6 p.m. and go all the way until two, three, four or five in the morning, depending on the kind of night you had. Like, right. You were actually treated like maybe perhaps less than you were treated mm-hmm. like like a degenerate. Yeah. And so therefore you were kind of forced to just find other people that had the same, same. quote unquote schedule. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
as yeah, you did, yeah. which generally meant finding people more outside the box, right. other artists, people of the night in mm-hmm. all kinds of bartender types, waitresses, waiters, and all that type of thing. So right. yeah, you're kind of in this pool of the nightlife people now. Exactly. Exactly. And some people, and that's pretty much what you're finding on the, on the luxury dating website, you know, they, they're looking for outside of that. They want to find someone, you know, who are not in that space. And granted, you do find people that are in that space that are there temporarily and they, mm-hmm. you know, move out, but very few. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about your California background. And, and then what I'm interested in is all the people that are moving here from California. Yes. Like, the, like they say that, you know, uh, however many hundreds of Californians are flocking here by the day. Yeah. What, what are your thoughts and perspective on that? You know, I feel Las Vegas is going to be the next, it's going to be a suburb of of California. We're going to be a suburb. Yes, definitely. (laughs) I mean, we have so many people moving in from California, as you mentioned, and their driving skills are coming here. And you see it all. I I literally, for every Nevada license plate, I see three Californian license plate. It's just, they're they're coming in. And and I understand why, you know, because the cost of living is significantly cheaper, right? You know, state income tax, there's none, right? So, you know, we're not, they're not getting 40% off of their, of their income being taken away from them in the state of California. And, you know, houses, you get a lot more bang for your buck out here. You know, you have the land. We're not sitting on right next to each other. And then we are close. We're we're very close to California, too, in the sense that if you want to go to the beach, three hour drive. If you want to go to Big Bear, you know, in California, two and a half hour drive. You want to go, you know, it's like if you want to go to the mountains, you can drive there. If you want to go to the beach, you can drive there. So, you know, it's not this like far fetched idea where like, oh, my God, you live in the desert and that's it. Mm -hmm. This is this oasis. Property here is so, so much cheaper compared to California that you can have Californians that just own property here and still live in California. Yeah. Can you imagine what's going to happen when they have that train? Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. it's going to and it's going to be a, I'm really curious to see what's going to happen and how Las Vegas is going to change. And I, I think it's going to change for the better. I think we're at a pivotal point in the city's life, if you will, where we're going to see a big change. And not for the not bad, not bad in any okay. way, shape or form. I just think you're going to see just the, a different, not a different way of life, but a, a bigger melting pot. Let's just say mm-hmm. that. I think there's going to be a lot more people that are actually going to stick around this time and not just think of it as to be a, a transient city. Yeah. Okay. Do you think that it's hard for certain people to stick around because of all the vices and all the temptations and the 24 hour nature of this town? You know, I think as yes. And I think that would really apply towards families. Um, and the only reason I say that now is because as a mom, right, of, of two, that's one thing that I do wish I would have in Las Vegas a bit more friendly, family friendly venues or family friendly activities or outdoors, you know, when, when the heat is not so hot. We do have the Springs Preserve, which is amazing. I don't know if you've ever been. Yes. Have you been? Beautiful. Have it's you a, seen the butterfly? It's so massive too. It's huge, right? Yeah. But can you imagine walking through that at 112 degrees? Yeah. 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 You know, so it's like you're very limited even right then and there. So that's one thing that I would say, you know, one thing I love about California, the weather. You can't beat the weather in California. I True. mean, if the yeah. weather was in California, if the weather in California was here in Las Vegas, Sure. Golden. It's why it's so much more expensive. I right. Get it. Like if it was cheaper, everybody would be there and then it, it wouldn't be fun. Exactly. Exactly. Other than that, I mean, that's pretty much it. The weather and just some activities that we can do, but it's not like we can't drive there and do it. Mm-hmm. But, you know, when you don't have the liberty to drive to the beach or to mm-hmm. the mountain or whatnot, like what do you do in Las Vegas? And so there are a lot of little hidden gems that you can go to. You know, you can, we have a lot of trails, a lot of hikes that mm-hmm. we, that I, me and my family love to, love to do. I'm um, especially in Red Rock. We are tend to be big foodies. So we love to go to restaurants and go to little brunch spots. You know, me and my daughter have little mother daughter tea times. We'll yeah. go to the Mandarin and have like high tea. Um, or we'll go to the, you know, Sharks Reef at the Mandalay Bay. Um, we'll always go to the Bellagio Conservatory to see the switch up of ev- love it, love it. every single time. Yep. Um, and you know, we, we, we try to make the best of it. You know, what are some of your favorite restaurants as foodies? I love La Strega. Yes. Great Italian food. Love it. Um, And I love for another Italian, like my absolute, absolute, absolute favorite um, is Norris. Have you been? I have not, but I've heard. Oh, of my God. You things. need to go. My okay. my husband actually was a buster there. Wow. wow. When he was 14. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it is the we actually had Shout our out Nathan. Yeah. We had our wedding reception there. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. And the owner's wife sang at our wedding. Yeah, it was, I mean, literally I go there for every type of celebration. We always go there because I just, the crazy Alfredo, you guys, Mm -hmm. you have to get it. There's some amazing Italian food in Las Vegas. There is. Have you been to, uh uh-oh, I'm blanking on the name, Joe's? Joe's Crop? 
No, no, no. Oh, um, I was going to say, that's, that's the Chicago place. <laughs> no, oh man, it's downtown. It's the side. It's like a small house. It's called Downtown Joe's. It might be called Chicago Joe's. Just some really tiny Italian restaurant yes, inside yes. of a it house. Yes, yes, it looks like a house. Yeah, uh-huh, yeah. Uh-huh, amazing. No. You, you drive past it thinking it's someone's house. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Meanwhile, it's like one of the best Italian restaurants in all of Las Vegas. Yeah, no, like places like that, just with character, and you never think. No, exactly. No, there's a lot. So I am um, there. I really enjoy going to Latai. It's in downtown. Yes, that's I mean, another good one. And they just opened another location, I believe. If oh. I'm not mistaken, or I'm just thinking of they. I think they have like a takeout location. Something oh, okay. Like that. No, like their main ones downtown, yep. and then it's there's like one so on similar. Charleston that I think was designed just for like to go orders or something. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I'm gonna check that out. Oh, yeah. I'm obsessed with them. Um, I was thinking of the other Thai place that opened at Red Rock. The oh, Lotus of Siam. Yeah. Yes. Did you did you yeah. know that used to be right? It used to be in this like. And they sketch, too also have yeah. It's like used to be in a sketch area, but the original one was in a sketch area. Yeah. It's, it was next to this billiards on Sahara and Paradise. And in that same shopping area was called the Green Door. Ooh, yeah, okay. About the Green Door. That is the infamous. Uh, you explain it. Yeah, the infamous <laughs> swingers. <There laughs> yeah, you can go in there and, and. Mary's gonna be like, "How do you know about it?" <laughs> <laughs> let's just talk about. Like, let's just say this. There's a lot of pineapples. There, you, you heard about pineapple, right? You know that that saying. Uh, it's like it's supposed to be a symbol of the yes. of that. Yes, like if you have a pineapple flag or pineapple. It's so whatever, funny. Mary right? totally bought like a long time ago, like a pineapple thing at like Home Goods, and was like, "This is cute." Oh, okay. And then someone literally was like, "Hey, do you know what that means?" And we we're like, "No." Yeah. And then uh, at one of the family's rental properties, they uh-huh. put a flamingo, like some decked out the patio with flamingos, and someone was like, "Oh, did yeah, you, you know, know the flam- yeah?" There's- did you know that that's also a <laughs> yeah? No, you know what? And like, there, that's a those. There's like secret code words you know even in the dating space um kind of just quickly going back to that you know there's times where if it is transactional they use the word like how many times do you work out i know no one can see me but like i have quote unquote (laughs) yeah work out and working out means how many times going to the green door uh like, sure. Or just how many times? Like, so work out is a code word for like take part in this swinger community. And, uh, take part in not in the swinger community, but take part in um, the physical activities of <laughs> two individuals. <laughs> oh man, it, it goes deep. This rabbit it, hole. It goes. It goes in real the dating deep. world. All really Especially in this town, where they've got every for every craving and flavor and thing yes. that you're into yes. whether weird or normal anything in between they've got it here they've got it here and you can find <laughs> it you definitely can find it oh man that's great you said that you have some brunch spots that's something that we don't really do a lot but i feel like as a family that's something that's do- definitely doable more mm-hmm. so than like a, just like even like a dinner before the kids have to go to bed type of thing yeah no so okay, not that so- not necessarily i'm asking for family friendly brunch spots but just what no, are you guys no, no, no. so what we like to go to um honey salt it's Love amazing. honey salt. Love honey salt. Sahara Charleston. Yep. Um, no, not Sahara. No, Charleston and Rampart. Yep. Yep. Um, we'll go over to Marche Bacchus. Oh, okay. Which is great because it's right on the little lake and desert shores. Beautiful view. Beautiful view. Yep. Um, and then, especially for the, if you want something a little bit more Instagrammy, mm-hmm. um, uh, we'll go over to Cafe Lola, which Love is it. right over on Wallapai and uh, oh, by, Flamingo. Yep. Right, Buffalo Wild Wings, right over there. And if you, um, there's also this, if you, it's a bit of a drive, but it's that's the so, New Orleans style one, correct? Uh, that's St. Henri, same by the own, um, okay. same owners. Oh, wow. But there's this one place, and I'm blinking on the name, um, but it's in Lake Las Vegas. Lake Las Vegas is another little hidden little It gem. really is. Yes. You can see at the Westin, beautiful um, hotel. Or the yep. Hilton. The Hilton actually used to be the, um, uh, oh my God, why am I blinking on the name? Uh, it's a very luxury, very lux- not yeah. St. Regis. It's along those lines of the St. Okay. Regis. Um, both, uh, we've stayed at both. We've stayed, the Westin has that like little lake area. Yes, it's really nice. You yes. Can go, Kayaking and yes, canoeing. And- exactly. And so there's this little rush, this little cute little brunch spot and it's all pink. It's like little Coco Chanel, <laughs> like little like brunch area. And you can just drive down there and just have brunch. It's very Instagram worthy and it's so cute. Uh, but then when you're down there, you just tend to want to explore all the shops that they have. So, yeah. you know, you, then you end up wanting to be like, oh, you know what? A hotel room right here for like a hundred bucks. Let's just do it. You right, know, yeah, and then take you, a staycation. Let's take a little staycation, mm-hmm. you know, and then you, then you're on the lake. Yeah. Before we started having kids, that that was our staycation. That was your staycation. Yep. Yeah. You bring them, bring the kids back over to the it's West great. End. They had like fireworks on the water. Yeah. During the 4th of July. It's, it's a really cute little nice. like weekend getaway. Yep. Exactly. Um, but yeah, those are just some brunch spots I can think of that it's not inside of a hotel. Mm-hmm. 
that are that are standalones, some yeah. brick and mortars. Yeah. That's the part about Vegas where it just becomes more and more normal to just enter a casino and Exa- go somewhere exactly. that you like to go. Yeah. Even you're not there to gamble, but your favorite restaurant might be inside of one of these casinos. Mm-hmm. It's just normal to just walk past just slot walk- machines. And- yeah. How did you feel about walking past your slot machine for the first time, like in a in a uh, convenience store at a gas yeah, station or in the airport? Even yeah. Just the second you land, yeah. it's like oh okay, party started. But I mean, like in, coming from Chicago, you could sure gas, you can you go, go at in. Albertsons. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you know, yeah. You're like hey, I just want to put twenty on two, and then you're like, oh wow, this guy just hit a jackpot right next to me. <laughs> you know, so it's kind of like. Uh, when did this happen? You know, it's right. kind of weird. But. That is true. Yeah. It, it's just part of our lives. Slot machines are part of our everyday normal life here. It right? is. It's, it is. But it's normal to us. It is normal to us. There's a lot of things that's normal to us. <laughs> that's not normal to others. <laughs> well, cheers to that. Julia, you've been great. How Thank do you feel? You. Great. Did great. You have fun? Yeah, I had a lot of fun. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. This was awesome. Can't wait to put it out. Awesome. All right, Julia. Thank you. Thank you.